is great. Okay, um, so I'm going to get started because we've got a lot of good stuff to get to. Um, if you don't already know me, I'm Gabe Lyon, Gabrielle Lyon. I'm the Executive Director of Illinois Humanities, and I'm really, really excited to be with so many people from every corner of the state. Thank you for making some time today. I think we uh, hope you find it useful, um, both for the information, but also just to be in community. Um, I also really want to thank my Illinois Humanities team, Mark Hallett, Chris Gazaitis, and Jen Yu. They did all the legwork to kind of pull us, pull us together. And you probably are noticing that uh, you're muted. So just a heads up and some housekeeping. Um, we're gonna have you stay muted for the first part of this conversation, possibly throughout, because we'd really like to use the chat. So if you have questions, if you have comments, put them in the chat. Chris Gazaitis, our senior director, will moderate and keep an eye on questions. And I'm just gonna start with a request. Please go ahead, give a shout out to your name, your zip code, and if you're joining us representing an organization, we would love to kind of collectively get to know who's in the room. And while you do that, I'm gonna do a quick intro for Illinois Humanities. My guess is you're mostly familiar, we see a lot of familiar faces, thanks for joining us. But in the case that Illinois Humanities is still new to you, or you still haven't quite put your finger on what it is exactly we do, we're the state affiliate for the National Endowment for the Humanities. So we are a nonprofit, but we were set up to make sure that federal funding could reach Illinois and reach our local communities. Our mission is really focused on activating the humanities. So we provide free public programs. We make grants. That's the catalyst for us coming together today. And we provide educational opportunities with the goal of fostering reflection, sparking conversation, building community, and strengthening civic engagement. So that's a little bit about who we are. We wish we had all the time in the world to hear about you. We're not really going to do that today because we're going to get to the Q&A about the grants and about other resources. But um, I just wanted to kind of give a heads up. We really have two goals today in convening this conversation. The first and foremost, and probably why you showed up, is because we really want to share information about special grants, resources and relief um, related to rebuilding from COVID-19. Um, but the second thing is, and it's part of why we asked you to put your zip code in and say hello, is to remind ourselves that we're not alone. This is an extraordinarily rich and talented community and being together is a really big piece of what it's gonna take to get us to be able to recover. Um, I just wanna share, one last thing. This is our second round for Illinois Humanities of COVID-19 relief and recovery grants. And the strategy and the reason we're doing it the way we're doing it this time around, which Mark is going to share in detail in just a minute, is we learned a lot from you the first time around. We learned a couple of things that I think is really important for all of us gathered together to know and understand. Firstly, there are humanities, cultural organizations in every county and corner of the state. For the most part, our organizations are serving communities that were under financial distress before the pandemic showed up. We're organizations that are serving often communities that were disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. And lastly, uh, what we do is what we really need right now. We need opportunities to come together, engage, mitigate social isolation, um, imagine collectively from our history and from our stories, what else and who else we can be. So as we go into our second round of relief funding, we're doing a couple of things. Keeping the grant simple, Mark's gonna talk about that. Uh, secondly, trying to make sure we're supporting communities as we do make grants. And then thirdly, 
you know, we want to keep learning from you. So please um, keep the questions coming in the chat, but please stay in touch well beyond today because we really, really are stronger when we're in it together. And I know Illinois Humanities team really values um, hearing what matters from, from our partners and community members. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark Hallett, who's going to kick off the good stuff. And again, thanks so much for making, thanks so much for making time today. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Gabe. Um, Jen, can you forward the, um, the slides? Um, so my name is Mark Hallett and I'm director of grants programs at Illinois Humanities. It's also my privilege to be able to welcome you all today. Thank you so much for opening this up, Gabe. Um, thanks to Jen and to Chris who are um, behind the scenes helping out um, with this program. Um, I also want to share, because so many of you probably know superhero Matt Meacham, that he specifically emailed to say that he's on a site visit in Savannah today and sends his regards. Um, so I'd like to thank all of you, not only for being here today, but for how all of you, all of us together, help bring the humanities and inquiry and conversation alive for communities across the state of Illinois. We are absolutely thrilled and honored to be uh, here with you today. Um, so as Gabe said, the goal of today is to provide an overview of the 2021 COVID-19 grants program. But before we jump in, we wanted to hear from three absolutely essential partners who share a core belief with us that we are all stronger. I know this sounds corny, but we are all stronger together. That's a real thing and we're firm supporters of it. So we're gonna hear now from Peter Vega of the Chicago Cultural Alliance, then Dave Oberg of the Illinois Association of Museums, and then Diane Foote of the Illinois Library Association. Peter. Excellent. Thank you for that introduction, Mark. And I am a strong supporter of corny competition. <laughs> I think we are stronger together, no matter how that sounds. Uh, excellent. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Uh, and thank you to Illinois Humanities, to the team, uh, to everyone here, Gabe, Chris, Jen, uh, Mark, uh, for allowing us to just give a short introduction, a bit about what the Chicago Cultural Alliance does and what we have going on. Um, so the Chicago Cultural Alliance is a, a consortium of 40 cultural heritage centers. We're in 30 different neighborhoods in Chicago, 30 of the 777 neighborhoods. And the Alliance uh, supports these cultural heritage museums, historical societies, and centers through our programming and events. And uh, on normal years, we would have a lot of public programming available uh, and we will be uh, relaunching our public programming in September with a relaunch of our Journey Chicago Cultural Festival. And so that will be uh, coming up more, more on that soon. But today I simply wanted to share a bit about uh, what we have going on right now because uh, our services are to provide uh, professional services to the cultural heritage centers that we serve to ensure that they have the resources, the funding, uh, and all of their needs uh, uh, met as smaller nonprofit cultural organizations. We wanna ensure that their voices are heard at a state and city level. Um, and so that is our work is to support them through uh, any efforts that they need. And so our, um, we've launched Activating Heritage as a conference that we have uh, every year. And this year it was virtual. And so I, I because it happened a, a couple of months ago, we were able to record all of our uh, session videos and we have that available on our website. So I wanted to provide that to everyone as a resource. If you go to activatingheritage.org, you can get all the 2021 conference recordings to check out all of the sessions from our members and talking about the work that they do. And then in addition, on June 24th, we have our copyright and collections workshop that's happening in partnership with uh, Lawyers for the Creative Arts. And I see Jen has put all of those links in the chat for us as well. So take a look at our resources that the Alliance provides. These are also all available for uh, any organizations to sign up. So um, it's free for our members to join, but uh, there's a small charge for uh, outside organizations, but it's very nominal. 
So if you're interested in learning more about copyrights and collections, uh, specifically from lawyers, uh, in partnership with Lawyers uh, uh, for the Creative Arts, we um, offer that to you all. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share what the Alliance does. Beautiful. Thanks, Peter. Um, Dave? Uh, thanks for the opportunity thanks. to be here. Uh, I'm Dave Oberg. Uh, my day job, I'm the director of the Elmer History Museum, but um, I'm a past president and currently serve as the vice president of the Illinois Association of Museums. Uh, for those not familiar with us, we are a nonprofit 501c3 organization uh, consisting of museum volunteers of every type from all over the state. Uh, we work to advocate for the museum community. Uh, we've just uh, wrapped up our virtual well, it went from Museum Day to Museum Month in uh, um, uh, April and going in, into May, um, trying to advocate for uh, additional uh, funds for uh, the museum community here in Illinois. Um, we spend a lot of time on professional development and education, helping museum professionals be stronger. Uh, we have a, um, a monthly museum people session. As a matter of fact, I'll put in a shameless plug for uh, this uh, today, actually at four o'clock. Um, and we use this Zoom forum as a chance for museum professionals and volunteers to all get together and talk about various uh, topics. A lot of that is revolved around coping with COVID um, in the last year, as you can imagine, um, trying to uh, navigate uh, tier one, two, three, phase four, entering phase five, uh, uh, reopening after the closure. Uh, been doing a lot of professional uh, development and training on how to pivot for more distance learning and online uh, learning opportunities in, in the current environment. And of course, we have an annual conference as well, which provides a great opportunity um, to, uh, to learn about just about every subject uh, uh, possible, uh, gathering experts from around the state. Um, and we collaborate very well, I think, with a lot of the other uh, cultural organizations here in the state. Um, we just, uh, we've been working with Arts Alliance Illinois um, on a major initiative, of course, uh, as is, uh, Peter and his group, um, uh, to get some additional arts funding and stimulus funding out there, uh, working with Illinois uh, um, Humanities, working with Museums of the Park and so many other organizations. Um, and uh, when it gets to be time, I can share some grant opportunities out there for museums and cultural institutions as well, so. Beautiful. Dave, thank you so much. Um, uh, next slide. And I think we're going to hear from Diane now. Hi, everybody. Hello, Illinois Humanities. Thank you so much for inviting ILA to be a part of this uh, work today. Um, I would first like to say that I'm team corny, agree totally, we're stronger together uh, in so many ways, particularly on these, these, um, these times. So thank you very much. Um, I, will I would like to give um, Illinois Humanities an um, enormous kudos. You are the first state agency to be out the gate with your detailed guidelines for actually getting this ARPA grant money out to the places where it needs to go. So thank you very much for doing that. I don't know what you win for being first out the gate, but you have points in my book. So thank you for doing that. Um, the other uh, thank you I'd like to offer is that uh, Illinois libraries uh, do like to collaborate across our state uh, agencies and uh, Illinois Humanities has been uh, one that consistently reaches out to the Illinois library community to make sure that our members know about grant opportunities and um, how we might be able to work together. And if I'll speak a little bit to the uh, librarians in the room today, I know that there are lots of librarians here. I know there are lots of uh, non-librarians here and that is uh, the, one of the strengths of today's event. Um, if you are a library and you are not sure if you do humanities programming, you do humanities programming. I imagine everybody who's in the room now already knows that, but there's a fantastic definition for what is the humanities on Illinois Humanities website. I'm not going to read it out loud, but it describes almost exactly what libraries do every day in terms of their programming, whether it's in person or online or um, at an Illinois Library Association annual conference or other continuing education event. Um, uh, traditional, the humanities are the examination of what it means to be human through the interpretation and discussion of all forms of thought, interest, and expression. That's right in our wheelhouse. So if you are wondering if you are eligible, if you should apply for some of these grants, yes is the answer to both of those questions. So I know we'll hear a little bit more details about uh, the grant opportunities for libraries through uh, Illinois Humanities. I would just like to point out, if I may, and it looks like you have kindly, uh, may I? Um, May I share my screen? I think you can. 
Yes. I can too. Yep. It just took off the other one. Um, I was planning to focus my brief remarks today on the ARPA opportunities, but since the other organizations have given a little bit of introduction into who they are and what they do, I'll do that briefly as well. Uh, we are um, obviously the Illinois Library Association. We represent libraries of all types. That means school libraries, public libraries, academic libraries, and special libraries. As so many of you have talked about, we do have an annual conference. Uh, we did uh, increase our remote learning opportunities uh, tenfold as everyone else did over the past year. Uh, we also spearheaded something called Bigger Than a Building, which was meant to give, uh, bring public awareness to the fact that what libraries offer, even before COVID, is much bigger than what's contained within the walls of our building. We're much bigger than the books that are on our shelves. Access to e-resources, remote reference services, uh, delivery to homebound individuals were bigger than our actual buildings. And that became very, very key messaging to put out to people last year. With regard to the ARPA funding in particular, I hope all our uh, libraries in Illinois and all of our members will take a look at this page. It is not meant to represent all details of every opportunity for you uh, through ARPA, but ARPA is a very multi-pronged, very complex, uh, really comprehensive, really kind of unprecedented federal opportunity for funding. So um, I am attempting to collect. If anybody learns anything please um, that's not here, please do email me. My email is here. here on the website. Um, it's dfoot at ila.org. Um, each of the agencies that will be disseminating money on the state level that comes from the, uh, the federal source, the ARPA source, is listed here. And you'll see that uh, Illinois Humanities does have the most fleshed out <laughs> section here. So thank you uh, for, um, again, for those great details. But that is a great source index page anyway of uh, places to look for um, library eligible ARPA funding. And so with that, um, I will wrap up and wait to hear the juicy details from everybody else. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Diane. Um, Jen, next. Um, so that was absolutely wonderful to hear from, uh, from Peter talking about activating history and CCA work, CCA's work, um, Dave and the professional development and conference that IAM does, and Diane with such wonderful energy, um, IAL, ILA's role and, and the connection between public libraries and, and the humanities, which we're very, very acutely aware of. Um, so now we're gonna uh, jump into um, the COVID-19 emergency relief and recovery grants. Um, and, and to repeat the housekeeping uh, that Gabe mentioned earlier, um, people are muted. And, but we do hope that you'll post questions that you have along the way uh, in the chat. So I'm gonna spend a few minutes walking through the basic guidelines of two grants opportunities, but please, any questions that come up, post them, uh, post them right into the chat and we'll try to get to them all. Um, and by the way, we will be sending out an email with um, a recording of today's event as well as a number of links to resources on the ones that have been shared by these folks as well as others. So without any further ado, while many of you may be familiar with IH's community grants program and our Activate History micro grants program, we really wanted to focus in on this timely uh, 2021 COVID-19 emergency relief and recovery uh, program. Um, we know that this is a, a really difficult time for many cultural groups across the state, uh, but we also believe that you all are the lifeblood of cultural work in Illinois, and we see cultural work as being essential to quality of life. That's that's a direct that's a direct through line. Um, so first of all, uh, the goals of the 2021. Uh, uh, um, 20 of uh, the COVID-19 uh, grants program. First of all, to provide emergency relief to humanities groups across the state in what are obviously trying times. Secondly, to enable others to provide humanities programming in their communities, which reinforce our connection to one another in moments of continued duress. And thirdly, but not uh, least, um, to help build the capacity of grantee partners across the entire state. Um, next. Sorry, let me just open up the page a little bit. It's hard for me to see the slide. Okay, so 
we've, as Gabe said, we've simplified the grants upper, um, offerings this time. And so basically there's one deadline, which is July 15th, and there are two grants opportunities. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the general operating grants. And then secondly, I'm going to talk about the public uh, human, the humanities project grants. So first of all, general operating so Illinois Humanities is going to be providing emergency relief grants uh, to humanities-based nonprofit organizations with budgets of up to $2 million. There are two funding pools. One is designated for organizations based within Cook County and one designated for organizations based outside of Cook County. So these grants are very specifically for groups whose missions are based in the humanities. Um, and this includes, and we can talk more about this if you like, but cultural and ethnic organizations, history organizations, humanities museums, literature organizations, humanities education organizations, media journalism and documentary organizations, libraries and archives, and then finally consortiums, alliances and collectives of these above named groups. Next slide. So the guidelines for uh, the general operating grants. So these grants are going to range from $5,000 to $10,000, depending on the organizational budget side. Um, this is really important. No matching funds are required at all. And we're really, really glad to be able to say that. So uh, please use the location specific ap application. So when you go in to begin an application, Note again that you're given a choice of either Cook County or outside of Cook County and be sure to, to obviously choose, choose the correct um, portal. So these grants are general operating, which if you've done much um, fundraising is sort of the gold standard. And what we mean by that is that when you have general operating support, it's not program specific, it's really to help you carry out your mission. It's for you to use as you see fit to help support your organization in carrying out its work. We do have to note um, that there are some restrictions because this is federal funding on, on things that funding can be used for or not used for, but, but still basically it's general operating support. So for example, you can't use these funds for, sorry people, no alcohol, <laughs> no lobbying, no international travel, et cetera. There are other restrictions, but still these are, these are basically to help you keep your organization afloat, pay the rent, utilities, staff, et cetera. Next slide. So here's the page around kind of what is eligibility for this particular pool. So these general, general operating or unrestricted grants are available to tax exempt humanities based organizations located in Illinois with an expressed and demonstrated commu commitment to the public humanities. So taxes exempt organizations with budgets of $2 million or less um, and groups can apply with a fiscal sponsor. Um, so note that when we, that we're saying tax exempt rather than 501c3, of course, 501c3 organizations can apply, but so can other organizations that don't necessarily have 501c3 status. The next bullet point is, um, as required by the National Endowment for the Humanities or NEH, organizations must have a DUNS number, a data universal numbering system number. Um, you need a DUNS number to be able to receive a grant. However, you could apply for the grant and not yet have a DUNS number, if that makes sense at all. So you're gonna need it to receive the funding, but you could actually go ahead and apply and not let yet have it. It actually takes a couple of weeks and we're gonna be um, supplying people with the number, with the um, link for being able to apply. So, it's always helpful to have things spelled out as clearly as possible. So the following types of organizations are not eligible for the general operating support. So organizations that do not have an explicit commitment to the humanities in their mission and programming, K to 12 schools, universities, colleges, and academic departments, chapters of national organizations, for-profit organizations or businesses, 
religious groups and individuals. Um, next page, next slide. So that's all the general operating. Now we're gonna talk about the humanities project grants. Um, and I'll just kind of say upfront that we, we are providing a more detailed and specific and sort of concise definition of what humanities based organizations look like this year and, and sort of the definition. We also really, really wanted to include a grants bucket that would be eligible for a broader array of groups to be able to carry out humanities based projects because we find that, that you all play an equally important role in, in carrying out the humanities in communities across the state. So this was really important to the, to the folks at, at Illinois Humanities. So Illinois Humanities will provide support for emergency relief and recovery to Illinois-based nonprofits to develop or continue humanities-based projects in 2021. These grants will support organizations that, again, may not have an explicit humanities-based mission or scope, but incorporate humanities-based programs or projects as part of their work. So here are a few examples. A performing arts group that includes audience-based discussion of their work, park districts that host seminars or workshops on history, literature, or other humanities disciplines, visual arts groups or art museums that incorporate art history discussions or seminars, community-based organizations that host discussions with community members that promote civic engagement, et cetera. So once again, there are two funding pools here. There are the organizations that are based within Cook County and there are organizations that are based outside of Cook County. And we ask people to, to click the, the proper portal. Uh, next slide. So more on the project guidelines. Um, these uh, humanities project grants are gonna be for $5,000 each. These grants are project grants meant to provide support to tax exempt organizations, again, intent on carrying out humanities based projects that aim to help strengthen their communities recovery and resilience dur during COVID-19. Note that uh, uh, no matching funds are required. Once again, we're really, really glad to be able to announce that. Normally um, with NEH support, uh, showing matching funds or cost share is a requirement and that's been, uh, that's been lifted this year. Um, and again, use the location specific uh, application. Um, next slide. Okay, and here's um, a little bit about eligibility for the project-based grants. So these grants are eligible to the following types of organizations. Again, tax exempt organizations in Illinois, public libraries, K-12 schools, universities, colleges and academic departments, and organizations focused on the arts for-profit organizations and individuals are ineligible for these. And once again, the same wording on the, the DUNS number, the Data Universal Numbering System. So once again, you will need to have one to be able to receive your grant, but in the process of applying, you don't have to have a DUNS number. Uh, next slide. Okay, so this is just to show people, in case they aren't familiar with it, um, what the portal looks like that we've linked to on the grants page um, for the 2021 COVID-19 um, grants. And so uh, some of you know this already, we at Illinois Humanities switched to uh, a new portal for handling the um, grants program at Illinois Humanities Founded is what, from what we're hearing, much more user-friendly. You can actually uh, create your, um, what's, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the word, your identity um, in Fountain. You can return to it and make changes. You can um, begin a proposal and come back to it later, which you, you couldn't do with the software that we were using before, et cetera. So this is just to show you a little bit. This is linked to directly from the grants page. So you don't need to take down this URL or anything like that. Um, next. And finally, this is once again, a little bit more of um, 
of what the fountain um, process will look like. Um, we're very committed to uh, to helping people work through Foundant if they're new to it and have and stumble with it for any reason. Um, and I, we're about to just open this up and hear from people with questions. I know questions have been floated out on the chat already. Um, but I want to add before we go into Q&A that I am always available, mark.hallett at ilhumanities.org for anyone who has questions about any of the above. We, we really, really, really value uh, doing our best to try to be accessible and helpful whenever we can. So I wanna put that out there um, before we get started. Um, but anyway, that's our brief walkthrough. So we would like to go ahead and, um, and hear from you all in the chat. I haven't had a chance to look at the chat, so. Um, Mark, I think I'm going to feed you some questions if that's okay. I'm trying to yes. answer a few of them in the chat, um, but there are some that have just come up that I think um, everybody would like answers to, I'm sure. Um, let me see. The first one is if you could just talk about the project. Um, this Deb Stewart over at Victory Gardens Theater asked if you could talk about the specific start and end dates for project grants. That's a great question. So, um, so the the we're pretty flexible on that. Um, however, and and this could be for funding a project that is beginning and ending with solely with this funding, but support could also go to continuation of a project. So, honestly, we're we're fairly uh, flexible on the timing. Um, ideally, because we'll need to report to the NEH on all of the activity that's been supported, et cetera. A project would end within a year of its being granted, um, but, but basically uh, it could be for something that's already begun. With our normal grants program, we prefer to support something that, is, that is, begins after funding has been awarded, um, but that's not necessarily the case here. I hope that's helpful. If you if you need um, if you want to talk further from Victory Garden, we'd be more than glad to later. Great, thanks, Mark. The next question is: um, Can you, if you already have a community an Illinois Humanities Community Grant that's active, can you apply for these grants? And then also, Mark, while you're answering that, can you also answer whether people can apply for both funding opportunities, Gen Ops and Humanities Project Grants? Yes, beautiful. Thanks, Chris. So first of all, um, all of our existing grants programs are continuing throughout this year with the COVID-19 uh, 20, God, I can't get it right. <laughs> COVID-19 2021 grants on top, meaning that our Activate History grants continue, the community grants continue, and we are, drum roll, we're about to announce Envisioning Justice grants coming up very soon. Um, you are completely eligible to apply for COVID-19 support on top of any other grants that you're getting um, from Illinois Humanities. This is really obvious, I'm gonna say it anyway, but grants from one project could not fund the exact same items and in another project, right? Does that make sense? If you have a staff person who's working on project A and they're getting a grant for it here, and then another grant comes they, can, they cannot be duplicative. I know that's obvious, but it's worth mentioning. Um, secondly, I think the second question was, can you apply for both of these two buckets? Is that right, Chris? So um, the answer is yes. Now, I will say that obviously to apply for the general operating support, um, you really need to qualify as a group whose mission and core programming is very much um, ensconced in the humanities. And if, if anyone looks at these descriptions and is not sure, please reach out to us. We'll, we'll try to get back to you right away. So really what we're talking about is groups that qualify for gen op support and for project support. And again, the answer is, is a total double thumbs up. You are, you are in fact eligible to apply for project support as well as the general operating. Great. 
sorry. Thanks, Mark. I did want to just clarify one thing. Um, I think it was Alice from Changing Worlds had asked if you had applied last year um, and received money through the COVID-19 emergency relief grants, if you could apply again this year. Um, and one of the things that I had just mentioned, and this is just building off what Mark had just said, is that um, some folks last year might have received Gen Op funding through that program that are not eligible to receive gen op funding this year due to the change in requirements. Um, however, that is why we have the humanities project grant so that we can make sure that any of the groups that were funded last year who don't have an explicit um, humanities mission or focus like still have a pathway to receive funding this year. And so it won't be through the gen ops category, unfortunately, but it will be through the humanities project category. So Alice, I hope that answers your question. And if that, if you did receive that funding, regardless, um, you still can apply uh, this year. It's not, it's not like it's, we consider that an active grant that would prevent you from applying. Um, one other thing, Mark, um, yep. can you talk a little bit about um, that we do have materials in uh, Spanish? I, I think that hasn't been mentioned yet. Yes, thank you. Um, and this is, I think, maybe a first for us. It's hard to say when something is a first for us or not. We started in 1973, and a lot of us haven't, <laughs> haven't been around since then. Um, but we have everything translated into Spanish, and including the process of, of submitting a proposal for review. So if anyone sees that or, want, or would like more materials, outreach language, et cetera, to colleagues um, who would prefer these materials in Spanish, we're more than happy to provide that. And again, the entire process um, can be, be uh, carried out in Spanish if, if, uh, if people like. Um, you know, I'll mention that back to your previous point, Chris, um, that last year we worked um, with 177 organizations by the end of the year. Um, there were 189 projects. So there were, I think, 11 um, organizations that actually received both general operating support as well as, uh, as project support. So that's certainly a possibility. And as Chris said, it was really important for us to include the project grant option this year. Um, there's more money coming from the NEH this year. And it's at the, we are actually going to be supporting more projects last year, probably twice as many projects as we did last year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw that out there and, and probably regret it later, um, but I'm pretty sure that that'll hold up. So I and, and I think someone put a question in the chat about um, preview of projects. So the answer is yes. If you, again, are on the fence around whether your organization qualifies for Gen Up support, reach out to us. We will get back to you, I guarantee you, within 24 hours. With, with proposal review, we definitely do that. And we welcome people sending either a full proposal or if you like, let's say just the project narrative or enough so that we can see what, what the, the gist of a project is. We will do our best. What I mean by that is we generally do review projects, uh, proposals, and get back to people right away. Um, I will say, please don't call, use email. And that's honestly, this is a really busy period for us as it is for everyone. And it's just easier to be able to review something, the written word, and then share back. It might be harder for us as we get closer to this deadline to be able to honor looking at, at every uh, project that people would like reviewed, but we will do our best to do it and to get back to people. I hope that helps. I, I'm, I'm wondering if I could do a small PSA. Uh, I interrupt this broadcast to remind all of you that you work with organizations who maybe are also eligible. And I think we're really committed to trying, you know, it's a huge opportunity at a really critical time. So as you're hearing these things, um, 
we do have more money than we had last time and we do want to reach places that maybe traditionally don't think of themselves as applying for grants because maybe they don't normally have the capacity or they don't have dedicated staffing or it seems like a lot of work. I mean, this is a team that will really help to the best of their ability, but also um, this is a really good chance to try to get support for, for projects. It's what it's for. We want to get the dollars out. Um, and it's something that uh, we'd love your help with. So please, if you're on boards or volunteers uh, with other organizations, um, please, please think, think, about, um, think about that too. You know, I really, appreci I really appreciate that, Gabe. And you guys will notice that that though we're defining public humanities organizations um, more specifically this, this year, we're also including public libraries in that category, right? That was an important, that was an important uh, move. And to Gabe's, Gabe's point around sharing the, the, the word with others, remember that a group that's carrying out a humanities-based project might be a group that normally is one that we think of as, as a pure sort of arts group, for example, and they might be carrying out um, humanities work. Or for that matter, it might be a social service-based agency or a neighborhood-based agency that's decided to do oral history, exploring the history of the neighborhood and sharing that out with people, et cetera. There are so many examples. So, so when you think of sharing these guidelines around with folks, don't think that it's limited so narrowly to public humanities groups. It's also a wider array of organizations that might have ideas that they've stumbled across or find strategic, et cetera, in, in terms of engaging with their constituencies. Mark, we did have um, another question actually from uh, Deandra uh, was, do you need to demonstrate economic need for the COVID relief grant similarly to how, what was required for the PPP funding? Yeah, thanks for that question, Deandra. So back to Gabe's point earlier, which is that we really, really wanna understand this sector, understand you guys and your organizations better. We are including questions in both of these grant applications around how your organization has been affected uh, by COVID-19. And so, um, you know, we're asking whether you've lost revenue, whether you fear your organization will close, whether you've had to dip into savings, whether there's a threat of losing staff, et cetera. And so that's part of our really wanting to, to sort of keep a handle on understanding what people are, are going through right now. For us, it's always a balance of trying to make a proposal simpler and easier and sort of quicker for people to fill out versus what we really want to know as an organization. And I have to say that I'm glad that we included these extra questions last year because that was, that was the fodder that helped us produce a report, um, the vision, wisdom and vision report that Gabe cited earlier. So it really meant a lot and it helped us to make the case for public humanities groups to have that extra um, information. So yes, we are asking again this year or questions around how your organization is, is faring right now. All right, Mark, another question is uh, from Sophia, what is the timeline of reviewing the applications and when will folks hear back about the application or whether they've been given funding? So the timeline is basically six weeks. So the portal is gonna close on July 15th at 5 p.m. Our goal is to get back to people and notify them by September 1st. I don't, I don't know why we set these goals. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, but we're gonna do our best to make sure that we're able to get back to people. And, and this is about as accelerated, I think, that as, as we can make this this time. Any other questions that people have? Things that I might have forgot? Oh, and then we have a follow-up and then the money needs to be spent in 2021? No. No, <laughs> no, 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 please don't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, this, so thanks to the NEH's flexibility, first of all, we were 
the state councils were allowed to, um, this sounds crass, but get money out the door um, by the end of the year, they extended that. And I think the spending has to be by September of next year. Um, there's, there's, so it's fairly, fairly flexible, honestly. Um, I mean, yeah, the NEH lifted, gave us more flexibility there. They lifted the cost share requirement. Um, in the past, they've also required the groups register with SAM and they lifted that. So they did a number of things that really helped us all out, I think, in carrying out this, um, this work. So we're grateful for that. Great, all right, we have, thanks Mark. Um, okay, so Jen just answered Vanessa's question, but Vanessa had a question about um, something on the application that requires a numeric, how many approximate audience members were not engaged. And so um, Jen said she's going to change that, right, on the application so that it's not just numeric, so you can also fill in narratively if you have a hard time filling that in just as a number. So Jen's going to update the application, probably ASAP. Um, and so that'll give people more options to fill out that answer. Thanks, Vanessa, for bringing that to our attention. Yeah, we were, we were last year, we saw, we learned a lot um, from this question, to be honest with you. And it's hard to, it's hard to say what would have happened, right? But we basically gathered from, from you all and others that um, I think just shy of 2 million audience members were not able to participate in humanities activities that otherwise could have. And of course, that's an estimate. Um, but that was, that was a big wake up call. All right, Mark, two more questions. One from Francesca, um, who says, we currently have an NEH grant. Can we still apply with Illinois Humanities? I guess I can answer that. Yes, you Go can. Ahead. <laughs> um, and the second question um, is from Dana. She asked, could you please speak more to how you view the performing arts as part of or outside of humanistic inquiry? Um, she's looking for clarification with regard to the general operating support. Um, so, in terms of the general operating support, and it it's going to depend on one verse, one organization versus another. I would say that the, the NEH is pretty clear, though, that performing arts, as a general rule, does not fall within uh, within the public humanities. Um, I would I would qualify that though, because it there may be a mission that that combines the public. Um, performing arts with the humanities, but as a general rule, that's probably the case. If, you, if you'd like to email us offline, it'd be a lot easier to answer that. Um, yeah, but that's kind of the, the, the immediate response. All right, Mark, one more question. Um, since the grant term can be extended beyond 2021, if we can we submit a humanities project grant with implementation for spring of 2022? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, great question. Um, uh, one, one other thing I want to mention quickly is that um, in addition to uh, to this grants program, one of the other ways that we're going to be using the support is to make sure that we're able to help convene groups in the coming six months, in the coming year. We're going to make sure that we're able to provide our uh, facilitation training to as many groups as are interested in participating. Those have been really, really popular. Um, we're going to be using support to continue to uh, provide workshops and bring people together around different topics. We did a survey late, late last year as part of last year's um, CARES Act funding and found that groups were interested in fundraising, in communication, social media, DEI, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusiveness, in evaluation, in program design, et cetera. And so we were able to provide workshops in several of those areas. I wanna keep that ball, ball rolling this fall and into next year. So I just wanted to mention that, that this is obviously a grants program, but we, we find so much value 
um, when we all come together and share our skills this way. Um, and the other thing that we're gonna be doing is, is a skill share. And a skill share is where groups actually help one another directly. When group A has a, a strength that group B is lacking in, we find that it's really value, valuable for them to help one another. And so we're gonna be organizing a skill share for organizations that are interested in participating in it. Johnny had a question about a cost to apply. I don't know if it was um, in relationship to the grants or to capacity building activities, but in answer to both of those, it is everything is free. And in capacity building activities, we hope to actually be able to provide stipends as well with some funding that we've received. And so um, definitely more to come on that. Any right. other questions that people have or that we missed? And again, we're always available if you want to reach out to us, Mark, myself, Jen, we're happy to answer any questions that people have along the way. Um, so, you know, please feel free to do that. Um, again, we have um, a lot of money to get out the door. And so obviously it's not endless, but um, so we're hoping that everybody here applies and also spreads the word um, to everyone that they know so that they apply as well. I know Mark um, had, uh, another slide that he was going to share with everybody just on some upcoming um, Illinois Humanities and activities. Um, maybe yeah. before we go back to us, I will interrupt mm. this scheduled program with one other PSA, um, which is you have work going on right now. <laughs> also, like not only are you trying to get funding, you're already doing programs. We're really trying to increase. And I'm muted. Did somebody no, I can me? hear you. I can hear you. Now. You're like, stop talking. My team is settled. Um, okay, just very briefly, you're still doing programs in the midst of requesting funds and purposing those funds. If you have programs going on, we love hearing about them and we will do our best to help you amplify and bring attention to those. That's a growing aspiration for us. So please keep us informed both about how things are going with the grant requests as grantee partners, but as core members of this community, let us know if you have something going on that you want to help get the word out. And if we can help with that, we will. Beautiful. Thanks, Gabe. Um, Jen, can you pull up the, the calendar, the events page? Okay, so we're going to run just sort of in wrapping up, we wanted to run through a, a few upcoming dates. So uh, I mentioned earlier that the Envisioning Justice uh, um, initiative is going to have a grants offering that's going to be made available June 15th. So that's right around the corner next week. Envisioning Justice has a rapid response event reentry on July 14th. The Envisioning Justice rapid response events are so are awesome. They're creative. They're fast moving. I really, really recommend them. Emergency Relief and Recovery Grants deadline, you know about already, July 15th. Museum on Main Street, Edwardsville will begin July 17th and Museum on Main Street, Salem on July 24th. Um, we mentioned the facilitation training earlier. There's a training coming up on August 19th and 20th. The Gwendolyn Brooks Youth Poetry Awards, which had a record-breaking 365 participants or uh, submissions um, this year, will have a ceremony on August 21st. Um, Envisioning Justice Grants Deadline, which I just mentioned, that'll be September 1st. Activate History Deadline, which you can reach out to me about or look at our website, also September 1st. Our Community Grants Program, that is our regular grants program, has a deadline of September 15th. Museum on Main Street, Savannah, which is where our colleague Matt Meacham is today, I think, uh, October 9th. And then Museum on Main Street, Jacksonville is November 20th. So we just wanted to um, take advantage of having you all here to share those. Um, yeah, I wanna thank Gabe, Chris, Jen, Peter, Dave, and Diane. Um, thank you so much and all of you for being here today. Um, I'm looking at the chat just to see if there are any, any last questions.
questions, but I'm not seeing any. Chris, if you see anything, please speak up. I think we're okay. Um, Beautiful. I did want to let everybody know that we will send a copy of recording, the recording of this to you all, as well as um, the chat uh, transcript, right, Jen, so that any of the resources that were mentioned will be in there. Um, and I know some folks asked for some additional resources, so we'll make sure that those are included as well. But again, please feel free always to reach out to us, and um, we hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and we can't wait to see all of your applications keep up the good work <laughs> thank you Bye. so much everyone for being here thank you everybody take Thanks. care everyone bye-bye